Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting on Wednesday, December 6, 2017, here in the municipal offices. Um, we'll, um, I just want to mention that this meeting is being recorded, and we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And minutes from the previous meeting. Kip, did you have a chance to look at them? I did. I read them, and I made, make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, and I last meeting. second them. All those in, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we got that done. Um, we have two things going on. So why don't we just skip select board comments and board of health comments and take you right now. You want to come up? It's just before we have a few minutes before the um, tax hearing. So um, we have the license. He is the license. It's in the signature folder. Okay. Um, we are just going to go ahead and vote the class two license. Is that correct? Yep. I just want to make sure. It doesn't say for non-motorized vehicles, though. You should say trailer. Twelve trailers. Trailers. It should have a note that it's for non-motorized vehicles. Do the non-motorized need licenses? Yes. I thought it was the... No. They need the RV the industry, industry requirements for this commonwealth can include both trailers and motorhomes. The question that has been brought is the automotive as in a car, van, or truck. That's the issue at hand. Motorized vehicle can be a motorhome. I get that. But we're approved for the RV sales, which can potentially include an RV. And we're just trying to do business in town and make money. That, and but this is going to hinder us making money if, if we can't get right. this but squared away. I was at all of those meetings, and you were quite clear that these trailers that you were going to sell or so were things that were being pulled. They were not motorized vehicles. They are. And there's a different bylaw that you need to go through for that. And if that's what you need to do or you'd like to do, then you need to go to the ZBA and to the planning board for that. The whole entire focus of our business, as yeah. stated from day one, was the RV repair. That can include a motorhome and or a trailer. There is no question of that, and that's what we currently do ourselves. What we're looking at is on our resale value. So if you, a client, or I myself go to a auction, it allows us to sell stuff related to the RV industry, such as potentially a motorhome. But our focus is trailers, tiny houses. That is our focus in the shop. So if we grant this license and you bring an RV in there, how, where do you plan to work on it? In your shop? Do you have we a don't nice oil separator? It no. has no bear, bearing on that at all. We do our not. bylaws do. No, 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 no. You got it. This, is, this goes back to that time of ZBA, mm -hmm. which was clarified. We do not work on motors. We'll work on a generator which is allowed in our classification. We have a focus of the RV aspect of that vehicle, as stated back then. Has nothing to do with, we'll do a brake job on a trailer, but I'm not doing brake jobs on motorhomes. I'm not doing oil changes on motorhomes. I'm not doing tune-ups on motorhomes. That is not our focus as a business. If that was, then you would be correct for an oil water separator, which is not our focus. I don't have time for that stuff, frankly. Our problem is if we, grant this license without that motorized vehicle restriction, there would be nothing to prevent you from bringing used cars on the property. And that's against our bylaws unless you receive a special permit. Correct. So what we're supposed to approve tonight is for the RV aspect only. And as was stated before, I would have to apply for some form of approval it's for two vehicles or of such not more than 12 trailers. Right. Right. Doesn't necessarily say. But this is for the sale of secondhand motor vehicles. 
that's because, because that's, I, that's, I, that's I, true. I, I, understand, I understand. Yeah, that. unfortunately, They're, it's not worded well in the state. Uh, that's I mean, why he's stuck. He, he needs this number. So I, and I understand he, that. Yeah. But I, we talked about this briefly last time about. It and that's why we dropped the cars. We dropped the cars. We've we dropped gonna, the vehicles, correct? Because we were going to have two cars on here, and not, and now we dropped it. So he okay. just he. So we're only focused right, on the I, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to seem like I'm playing hardball. So, I'll go ahead and go along with this now. But these are renewed every year. Sure. If you, if we, if it's brought to our attention that you're selling motor vehicles, cars, trucks, vans, things like that, um, you'll have a problem getting this renewed next year. Okay? Right. So as long as you understand that, unless yeah, I, you go through, it's, it's only unless through we go the, through the process. It's needed. only through December 31st anywhere. And okay, then, but then it, 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 you would come in for gonna, renewal and yeah. stuff. You, you know what I'm trying to say. No, I understand if, where you're going. If you that. want to, and I don't have a problem with you doing that. Yep. I just don't want it to be a precedent that, you know, this is a way around going right. through this. And I, and I know going through these boards is difficult at times. Yeah. Um, but it, it's the process that needs to be yep. followed. And, Understood. And if, and if, as a select board, we override that process, it doesn't make us look good, and the volunteers on these boards get upset, you know, and... <laughs> And then if we don't have volunteers for these boards, a lot of stuff's not going to happen. Right, so. right. I, I agree. But I, right. I, I'm also very sympathetic to the fact that you oh, I, I am have an order I that you need the number for tomorrow. Yeah. And, I, I, and I'm the one that delayed you from yeah. last time. So yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so thank I'll you. entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the Class II license for uh, two feathers restoration. I have it all right now. Oh, you do? Yep. <laughs> right. I move to accept. Well, wait a minute. That's one one. I move to grant Two Feathers Restoration Design LLC a Class Two permit with the following restrictions: not more than 12 trailers. I second that. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Do they sign something? He can take it, or what do you want? What do we do now? I have no idea. No, I'm asking you. Can I get it um, to him tomorrow? Yeah. He needs. He needs a number. To, he has an order. Yeah. Uh, that's waiting for the number to be shipped. So, um, oh, I don't need okay. oh, yeah, you need to sign it too. Um, they just said that, so they realized that okay. we're going to have yeah. to do another one shortly because of it. Right. But that's okay. No. Yeah. So that gets, that gets us no. through. That's not what she just said. What? That's not what I said. That's not what she just said. I'm sorry. What she said is that it expires December 31st, 2018. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. That's the date I put because there's only two weeks I see. left in the world. Oh, because well, it, a, say, it says 17 here. You only put 17. That's right. <laughs> that was why I said he has to renew Can it. I see it. Sure. So I'd have to pay the $90 again? You shouldn't have to. Okay. Actually, Key can go fix it and give you, <laughs> give you one. Key, can you? Well, then this is the way that you set it. Right. That he would have to renew. All right. We can waive the fee for next year. And, and that's the point. Yeah. We can waive the fee. Do you, do you agree to that? Yeah. OK. We'll waive, we'll waive the fee for next year. And what is the process to renew? Who do I see? Uh, Where do I go? You'll you just, get a notice, right? Yeah. Okay. Key, will, key, key will put you in the system. Okay. And and we'll waive the fee since you're only got a couple <laughs> a few weeks days anyway. away. It seems yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. Christmas will be here before you sneeze. I <laughs> Although I but did I'm, just register a vehicle and the state would not waive the fee. I have to pay to register Kip, that truck. We're just thing. the poor man has driven down here twice to get his damn <laughs> license. So, listen. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Twice on everything. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you. Last week was a very crazy week. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, we have a um, scheduled hearing. Uh, we'll go back up now at 6:15. Um, would you all come back up? You want to come? We'll have our tax classification hearing. I'll just read the classification hearing. The Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on December 6, 2017, at 6:15. Uh, PM and the town offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, on the issue of allocating the local property tax levy among the five property taxes, 
property classes for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018. This tax classification hearing will be held for the purpose of providing an open forum for the discussion of local property tax policy. The central issue to be discussed is whether all five classes of property, um, residential, open space, commercial, industrial, and personal, shall be taxed at the same rate or at different rates. The information and data concerning the fiscal effect of the available alternatives is open to the public inspection in the offices of the Board of Assessors at their office in the town offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Interested taxpayers may view the material and attend the hearing. Written and oral statements from interested taxpayers will be accepted and taken into consideration at the hearing. Written statements will be also accepted prior to the hearing. Um, Carolyn Shores Ness, Chair, Deerfield Select Board. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. Can you introduce you? yourselves and um, just in case people don't know you? I can't hear you. Oh, I'm introduce sorry. Yourself. Can you just introduce yourselves in case people don't know you, John? Oh. Is that on? I think they're on. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. I think so. I'm sorry. Uh, John can hear. Can hear. Chairman of the Board of Assessors. Yeah. Uh, Skip Sobieski, Board of Assessors. Charles Shattuck, uh, Board Member as well. Thank you. Okay. Okay, well, we usually start out by telling you what we anticipate or what we are, have actually decided a tax rate's going to be. Okay. Uh, and that is, will be uh, $15.95. Okay. It's an increase of 55 cents over last year. Um, we struggled with this quite a bit. Uh, we had a conference between Wendy, Brenda, myself, um, and we are taking the conservative approach uh, to to this um, to these figures uh, because we're anticipating having to spend quite a bit of money in the not too distant future. Uh, if we lowered the rate and left excess capacity on the table, uh, we'd lose it forever. Once, yeah. y you know how that works, once we um, leave it on the table, it stays on the table. We never get it back. So uh, we've decided to, to err on the side of caution and we've used very conservative figures in terms of estimated receipts uh, and uh, a fair amount for overlay. Uh, so that would leave us with a 1595 tax rate. Okay. Uh, if there is any thoughts that you would like to split it, um, we've got figures prepared and we can look at those uh, you could go anywhere from 1595 for residential down to 1403 for residential. Uh, that would increase uh, personal property and industrial from the 1595 to 2169. I, um, John, we've had this conversation, uh, and Skip's been through it too a few times now, and I, I, I just don't think we we're in a position where we would want to harm our business businesses in town. It's not usually it doesn't make sense. Uh, they pay more in taxes and require less services, obviously, and uh, you know. You don't want to discourage people from. That's certainly our board's feeling also. Uh, in addition, uh, people need to be aware that because of the districts involved, we would have a real nightmare on our hands if we adopted a split tax rate because one district has already met and decided to keep a single rate so I don't know how, from a bookkeeping standpoint, you would ever 
you know, get this thing worked out. It would be a mess. Well, I mean, a couple different discussions that I've, you know, uh, like workshops that I've been to, the only time that you really do a split rate is if you're trying to nail a business going out of town. And, um, you know, like, say somebody was Pelican or Yankee Candle or somebody was moving out of town and you wanted to collect as much as you could on the, that one year. But I, I, I just don't see that there's any positive, um, you know, reason to do it, so. That being uh, said, I move to accept the recommendations of the Board of Assessors to adopt a single tax rate for fiscal year 2018. And I second that. Um, is there any further discussion? No. I mean, did you have any input on that? No, I agree with you. Okay, and I, I had talked to Trevor a little bit last time um, before he had his operation, and um, he was supportive of the single tax rate as well. How's so. he doing? Oh, excellent, Just excellent. Talk with him. He's, He's really good. doing well. He may be participating yeah. at meetings soon. Um, so, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, okay. Thank you very much. Is Thanks. there a few other things you would like to say, John? Or? We need to have you sign. Uh, okay. Just this Just one, one page. paper that we I can write that up. held the, cl can you? Yeah. yeah, I can bring it up. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Is that the only one? Yeah, that's the only one that they need to sign. Okay. It's just saying we're going to just have one single rate. Okay. And that we had the hearing. Barbara's got to sign it. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Barbara's got a sign that we, she put the notice in and we had the hearing and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Well, thank you. Right. Thank you for all your work on this. I know it was a real, it was tough this year, John, to figure out what to do. It, it was. It was a challenge. Yeah. But I appreciate it. And I also appreciate you taking into consideration that we do have some um, expenses down the line that we have to face. And um, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Can I just also acknowledge the extra hard effort that we made, you made to get this done now so we can get yep. the bills out before everything changes. <laughs> but there's so many people have come in and said, when am I getting my bills? So thank you, thank you. Yes, I, I, I really do. I know it's been hard, so I appreciate it. It was a concerted effort. I mean, we all, we all worked hard. Wendy worked hard. Brenda worked hard. I know, everyone. but John, I appreciate it. People. I really do. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you, all three of you. I really thank you. Thanks, thank sir. you. Okay. Um, do you want to go back? Uh, Skip, did you want to talk about anything or anybody want um, public input? Okay. All right. Um, we'll go back up. Slickman's comments, did you have anything you wanted to say, Skip? Um, no. Okay. Um, I, I just want to mention that yesterday we had uh, the core group of the um, municipal um, vulnerability preparedness group meet. Um, that's an M MVP grant we got. And um, actually it was a really good meeting and I feel like we are on, on track and we will be having a community-wide meeting January 24th from 10.30 to 4 here in the town hall. And we will have lunch that has been donated um, by Eagle Brook um, for, for people that want to participate. And it will be talking about, oh, how do we adapt to climate change? And um, before people roll their eyes and are saying, what are we doing? The idea is to be one of the first in the state. We've been working so hard since Irene through the Creating Resilient Communities Group and coordinating with the Franklin Conservation District to meet um, a lot of the flooding concerns and to fix culverts and be resilient um, in, in what we do. We are hoping to get credit for it and be one of the first communities in the Commonwealth that will be MVP certified, which will give us extra points. And the project that we're hoping to do is um, Richardson's Candy Kitchen work with the state in that area all the way down to the river, which um, is well over a million dollars worth of work. So we're hoping to get that done. 
through this program. So having people to participate will um, be really nice. And so if you're at all interested and you have nothing to do or have nothing better to do on the 24th, please show up. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Um, January. 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 Not December. January. If we knew what they were serving for lunch, we might get a better turnout. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll announce that closer. Oh, we probably will have an idea, but it will be better than I was just going to buy pizza. But um, actually, Eagle Brook stepped forward, so that was very nice. Um, just Board of Health comments real quick. Um, the H3N2 um, flu virus is especially bad this year. It's already widespread in Massachusetts, and just keep washing your hands. We have the ability to get flu shots here um, with Lisa. And um, it, while the, it, the flu shot is less effective in preventing, totally preventing the flu this year, only because it's very uh, uh, virulent, slightly mutated form, um, the match is correct and you will get a lot less sick if you have the flu shot. So please, have an if you have an opportunity, you can get the flu shot here and um, keep washing your hands because it's going to be nasty this year. Do you want to say anything about the planning board or, or anything else? You know, talk about the bylaws? and. No, we, we don't really. But you're going to have a hearing though? With your next we're going meeting. to have a, a public hearing um, is it sometime uh. in January. I'm not going to be here, okay. so I wasn't it's, it's that in, paying it's attention. It's in January <laughs> to do with uh, the new Let's marijuana see. bylaws. Oh, that we're thank you. About, so. Good. Yeah. We'll try to get, we'll work and sure. try to get ready the material ready for January. Okay. 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 Well, I'll sort it out with Lisa and. Yeah. We'll have Adam probably will be talking to Dick about that with the zoning okay. issues and getting All ready right. for that. We'll, um, we'll have that sorted out by for the for your January meeting. Okay. Uh, it's on my to-do list, so. <laughs> Anyway, okay. um, administrator's report. Um, busy week. We had a personnel board meeting. You've gotten some mail from them, recommendations, votes they've taken. Uh, I'll just skim through that and we can talk more about those. Um, and finance committee met last night. I don't know if, if the chair of the committee wants to address some things they talked about. Um, just to say, <clears throat> Given them the books, you've got them. Budgets are not due until December 22nd, but we've got some trying to keep things moving along. Um, and the capital um, budgets were due on December 1st. And I think I've got all of them. I don't have anything from the school. Um, and, you know, I, I understand that we don't anticipate, at least not their budget, their operating budget. I don't know. Um, well, this kind of leads into one of your items tonight, is what's going to happen with capital uh, for the school at this point. Um, so it's been a busy week with that. Um, um, we did receive, we, I think we mentioned <clears throat> a while back, uh, we applied for a couple of items to the municipal uh, insurance, the Maya program, yep. and we got one of them. Uh, we got the backup lights for the trucks, for the highway. Oh, that's works. wonderful. So, yeah, we're happy about that. Um, our New England Natural Bakers are expecting today or tomorrow to get word when they're going to have their closing. Um, another, so that's moving along. We've been staying in touch with their attorney. Um, Pat Smith will be here later at, at 7. Um, she's been helping uh, with uh, the Energy Committee in town with putting together our reports that are due for green communities that are complicated and difficult and we're really grateful. I'm grateful for our energy committee and friends of the energy committee and for FERCOG and Pat Smith for the help and all the um, Brenda who's provided a lot of information and I have some more tonight from the police department. I think we're all set now with all of this interesting information we need to collect in order to be eligible once again for monies. Um, some of which could potentially help the school with the, the needs they've talked about. Yeah. Um, are the other towns on board with that stuff? Um, the, the, are they 
reapplying to get certified again to be green communities so that they can chip chip in to well, do I these? I don't know if they have to reapply because they've been doing their reports. Oh, okay. That's I mean, our problem is that reports have I, not I just been wanted submitted. to make sure that they were eligible yes. so that we're all It's using complicated. Green. Apparently, um, Sunderland is the most, I forget what the term is, but they're, they're above like all communities, and I, I forget what it is exactly at some level that they've reached, which which would make them the key town to do some work with the school. But there are other, there are a whole lot of things that were outlined to us, us being the school administrators and <coughs> the four town administrators in the okay. regional school district by Jim Berry, um, relative well, to good. not just the Green Communities Program, but a number of other energy programs. So um, I have notes about that and the school it's going to go back and look at, you know, pursue some uh, okay. of those avenues. I was thinking, I, I just thinking through sure. that as they put things together, what other funding sources they could pursue, yeah. including the ESCO, which we have done and I think Sunderland has done. Um, and we're not necessarily saying that's a good route to go. But what is the ESCO? ESCO is the Energy Service. Service, okay. so service that's we did. The, uh, um, yeah. We had uh, mixed results on that. Right. Yeah. A complicated um, I, system in the elementary school and... That um, wasn't a, yeah. a very smart thing it's to do. It's probably bigger for, better for larger communities, so yeah. it's, it's complicated. Did you say that Sunderland might be able to help with the school? Well, they, could they, be the lead, lead, the right they might be, be the, the lead for okay. lead community because they're, well, they're certified on a separate level than, than they us, They've just right? reached certain goals where yeah. had not only yeah. of us and others, but at the state level. They're really very... The vast majority of the issues with that media center at the high school is insulation mm -hmm. related, so... Yeah, but that's why we wanted to do something through the green. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so. but there so were other opportunities that Jim Barry presented, and, right. and uh, they have copious information yeah. about that to look into that. Okay. And all of us were there, so we can, you know, it's more complicated that and more and more work. But if it's an, if we can use grant money, then it mm -hmm. makes total sense to do this. I, I just hope yeah. that people will hang in there. There's also a letter in your packet from the Energy Committee asking yep. you, basically just letting you know that um, if you're interested and want to support efforts towards some kind of regional municipal aggregation, um, there, that's, I think, yep. second um, one. It says draft on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think, well, they're we'll gonna, bring it there's up. There's going to be a formal letter coming yeah. to the board, but this is just to let you know that they're looking at this and if anyone okay. is interested. We have... Oh, uh, Ashley, they're at, I think they did decide. What's the date? Yes, by de it's December 1st. If you would designate um, Steve Iper and uh, David Gilbert Keith from the Energy Committee to represent the town uh, at these aggregation meetings. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I'd, I want to make sure of is that <clears throat> with the uh, energy credits that we're going to receive from the project at 901 River Road, along with our current uh, energy supplier, I think our rates are going to be quite reasonable. I don't think that getting involved with uh, I'm not saying that I don't want to look at it, but I'd hate to commit to anything because I think... Oh, no, this is just early stage. This is just to look at yeah, it. Yeah, so I'm sorry. And this is more long-term, <clears throat> too. If you would yeah. uh, um, appoint them, to, if, yeah. if that's okay, too. Uh, why to don't do we do that right now so we don't skip over it? Um, Steve Iper. I make um, I make a motion to appoint Steve Iper and uh, David Gilbert Keith to this aggregation uh, group to look at um, regional. energy regional energy aggregation. I'll second yes. the motion. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Speaking of the River Road Solar Project, um, I was just going to say, how, how have, are we? Are we hooked well, up yet? Well, communications are much better, and and to me, as I say to everybody, it's everything. And so I've <sighs> in the loop with EverSource and Kenyan Energy, and now they're, you know, one's trying to sh demonstrate more effort than the other to me. So it looks like they were supposed to be actually, all, hopefully, ready to go by the end of this week. Um, well, that's good. I can once again check in, but they were going back and forth this week about we've done this, it's your turn to do this, that kind of stuff. It's um, so <laughs> that's an update on that. Well, um, I hope so. That would be a little nice. So to I just hook got out. my deployment orders. <laughs> I'll be leaving Monday, but I, tomorrow will be my last day in the office until I return. Texas, but I'll be available. Alabama, Texas. Texas. 
Yoo-hoo. And um, I'll be available. We talked today about, you know, staying in touch and how we communicate. Um, um, and I think hopefully things will be quiet because of this time of year. And, um, you know. So are you going to help build the wall? No, hmm. no, no. I'm, I'm going to help take down walls between people. So That's you're, what you're my... build the wall around Austin to keep Austin safe. <laughs> No, my role is to, to bring down this. So, anyway, um, uh, but I will be <coughs> in touch at all levels of communication. I don't want to be texted a lot during the day, but um, I'm asking people to go through key. Um, and but I will be on checking email and phone messages yeah, and things. That's like fine. That, so, I'm, I'm sure we'll be fine. I we are so much better off Without now that you've here. been here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> then. The last year at this time, I was completely crazed. I was here last year. No, I wasn't. No, you weren't. <laughs> you weren't here That's last right, year, I and I was pretty much overwhelmed. So um, we have Key on board, and we have you on board for a whole year now, and it, I mean, almost a year. And so, yes, we are much better off. So thank you. I'm sure we'll be fine. Let's keep moving forward. I know. Make but feel great again. Oh, it always was great. Deer deer <laughs> Keep the deer in the deer here. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we can get into other things that are on your agenda. Um, okay. I um, let's let's we'll do the budget stuff in a minute, but I want to get down to the um, election machine. We have to we have to read this as it's written, um, so that we notify the state that we are using the new machine not the old machine so do you want to read it oh uh, sure i move <coughs> excuse me i move pursuant to mglc 50 section 34 we vote to use the image cast uh, precinct tabulator at the deerfield annual town elections on may 7th 2018 and therefore at all premises thereafter or, or thereafter Sorry. at all uh, I premises be exactly right preliminary elections and annual elections held in the town of Deerfield until otherwise ordered by vote of the Deerfield Select Board. Said electronic voting system shall be used in those polling places designated by the Select Board. Further, the town of Deerfield will discontinue the use of the AccuVote optical scanner effective April 1, 2018 in any and all elections held in the town of Deerfield. I second that. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Key, uh, Barbara has to have that certified that we in did the minutes, that. The vote. We can do a separate. Mm -hmm. um, and it has to be whatever, documented really well. So, it's right yeah. Okay. Um, did you figure out anybody for our representative on the building committee? I have. Okay. I haven't Key, come across anybody. So. I brought it up to the finance committee last night. And everyone. Um, Key, me. can you put this on the agenda for next they, week? They wanted somebody by December 8th. That's why. I, I know. Well, we'll have to put it on for next week. Okay. And you could. Oh. Can you think of anybody? Keep thinking. Uh, I was, yeah, was going to say. Don't. don't. <laughs> I was going to say, can I fill in until we get somebody? I mean, I. I I, I would not mind doing that. I just don't want to do it all the time. I just, you know, get okay. too many things I, to I'll do. I'll make a motion um, to appoint you to um, fill in until we get somebody. And that way they have a name from us. Okay. Temp temporary. Tem uh, uh, interim interim um, repair subcommittee representative. Okay. Do you second that? Oh, okay. Can I second <laughs> myself? Yes. Okay. You have to I because do. there's nobody else. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, Trevor's supposed to be watching. Um, all in those Texas. in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, um, Key, the position is interim repair subcommittee representative from the town of Deerfield. Um, thank you very much for doing that. Um, okay. Uh, go back up to the budgets. Um, if you want to do the transfer station inspection Oh, well, yes. Let's get the transfer station stuff. That's, um, this is the annual report that's done. Uh, it's, it's in the pink folder for signatures right there, in front of Kip. Kip. Oh, Kip, okay. Kip, right there, okay. that top thing. Solid there were some things, yep, that were found and they're being addressed. 
Okay. Um, I make a motion that we sign uh, the correction items, which. Um, what was that for? Was that for a compactor this is, or something? This is. Um, it's for the actual whole station. It, it was a whole there were a couple station. items. One oh. was the uh, the hut. Hut, yeah, the hut had to be fixed at the entrance to the hut, and um, I just want to—I I didn't have a chance to look at that, so I just want to look at this real quick. Um, stormwater drains to the grass edge at the lowest point of facility has been corrected. Uh, partial fence from the security point of view has been affixed. Uh, waistband sign is posted. I saw the I saw the new sign posted myself the other day. And that's been picked. Up. So they're going to get more batteries for the methane detector. Um, that, the fire, that's one of the fire right. extinguisher. They have a right. twenty-pound fire extinguisher. Right. Hmm. Kevin's okay. aware and already correcting these things. There he is. It's up oh, to them. I'm it's sorry. Up to them. Can you turn up the volume on the mics? I'm sorry, you can't hear us. Thank you. Um, I make a motion to sign the uh, corrective action policy. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's, it's actually the inspection report. My, my um, name is spelled wrong. Jan did that. Okay. You can fix it. Yeah, I'll just fix it. Okay. Um, and Speaking of compactor, we did put that into the next year's uh, capital plan. Remember that discussion about right. it be much, you know, it costs more cost effective to include that to we purchase one rather than continue to lease. Those. Right. Yeah. So. Actually, I, I think you we need to amend our um, motion that I uh, for to for me to sign. Because it was not, it was only one signature required. Should we, should we require, make an amendment for that? I'm, you agreed to to sign it, right? Yeah. I think that's enough. Okay. Yeah. I just because it was a state thing, I didn't know. Do you want this folder back or? No, I think in some towns, I would just sign it. <laughs> but I okay. would like you to know what's going on, so everybody listens to it. Okay. Um. So let you follow up with this. Send it back. Oh, this is the one we have to sign. I'm sorry. My copy, which is the same here. So. How come? I, how come you signed this and I didn't sign? I let you phone. Because you told me to. Oh. All right. Oh, the other thing that um, that we need to sign is the participating participating municipality agreement. Um, uh, uh, this is the town of Deer, uh, Greenfield is put in is putting in for a grant to take over the enforcement of the tobacco stuff that oh, okay, okay. South Hadley is not and we had talked I talked to Alexi today who the, is the director of Board of Health up there and he um, is putting in some extra money and he would like us to be like the South County you know work with our um, resource officer and do South County so he's going to put in extra money and so this is to participate so um, I make a motion to. How much would it cost the town? Oh, nothing. This is for grant money. Oh. This is to put in money for us to pay All right. for our enforcement. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, instead of South Hadley doing it for us, right. which we had already withdrawn from anyway. I see. Um, so we're just doing it on our own, out yeah. of our own budget. And but this is to give us grant money. checks and stuff like that. Yes. As well. okay. This what this does is give us grant money to do it. Okay. For South County, so um, I make a motion to um, sign this participating municipality agreement so that Alexi can, the director of public health, can apply for a grant 
I'll to second the motion. support this activity. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It's it's due Friday. That's why it's a little bit of a rush. Okay. Um, but he decided he wanted to do it instead of supporting South Hadley, and we had already well, that's fine. we had already withdrawn from that. Yeah. So. Um, Okay, so then we're back up to the budgets. Um, if you want to, we can um, go through the budgets and approve the ones we have. I'm okay. The only ones that um, I think we want to put on hold is the planning board one. And um, the, the plan, planning board one, we agreed that uh, we would keep it at $1,500. We thought it was the same as last year. I was just saying last, no, last year wasn't 7500 I. I don't know. You know um, Brenda asked me to put it on hold um, because that was going to get sorted out. So I said I was fine. Okay, the dollar amount's very minimal, anyways. It's either a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. What we spoke about at our okay. meeting, um, be because we have—I'm not sure if you call it a reserve fund or whatever—but we have a lot of money in that if we needed it. Um, in yeah, but isn't that restricted to just doing peer review kind of stuff? Um, Right, but that's pretty much what we spend the money on. The only other thing is, you know, if we do mailings and stuff like that, but we get money from applicants for that as well. So, you know, there's... Yeah, that's legit money. Yeah. Um, well, I think we had... The reason why we wanted to give you some money was because um, to do some training, you know, to go to some training. And that was where some of the discussion was. Hmm. Well, there's been, some, there's been several opportunities for training and nobody's gone, so... I know. Well, we're hoping to encourage it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, there's a few small budgets that we could pass on to the um, sure. finance committee. Okay. Um, so there's the moderator. Mm -hmm. um, select board salaries. Yes. I was going to keep the same. Um, did you have? We can hold on this one if you want. It's but, just our expenses? Yeah. But I, I had kind of, um, this is regional emergency planning. I was just going to have an emergency planning line. Um, it's only a hundred, it's a hundred dollars. Um, I talked about putting it up to a thousand, but it didn't matter. As long as there's got something in there, um, so that we have an emergency expense line. That's the one I was trying to get conf confirmation from. MEMA that if we have a line item in our budget, then we don't have to go to the Department of Revenue for um, deficit spending approval. We can just deficit spend. Right. So I don't know, do you want to put that on hold? I was just wondering why, it would, why we would need to increase it if we didn't spend it all. Um, well, remember, we didn't have anybody last year. What are you looking at? So the we, budget, I'm sorry. Uh, Select board and administrative, administrative expenses. Expense. Um, what's your question? Well, I, why would we need to increase it if we didn't spend it all? You know, it seems like because we are a fully operational office now, and we last year we, we didn't we have nobody. anyone to do anything. Right. <laughs> so, didn't so get we spent. all do is really carry the money over. So. You can't no, carry money reverse, over. No, well, I, I understand. But. It reverses the general fund. It fund. becomes uh, right. um, uh, our, our extra cash. Yep. Our free cash. Well, it's not free. Yeah, I, I said. Yes, I knew you were trying to avoid saying that. <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, well, the dollar amount is free. And also, I don't care. What. If you want okay. to just get rid of it? And I should get my. Well, the only thing I wanted to increase was be this um, emergency line. I think it should be more than a hundred. And it's and it looks like it's regional emergency planning. I would just I was going to put emergency response or emergency management. Yeah, I, sorry, I'm right off the hand. I'm not remembering exactly what that was meant, intended for. So why don't we leave this on hold? Okay. That's okay. fine. And because I, I still haven't gotten a confirmation from MEMA that if we had the emergency management line in there. And we put, say, like $1,000 in. 
And then if we had an emergency, you don't have to go to DOR. You can just deficit Okay, spend. so that's a placeholder then. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's wait because mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to tie up I don't want to tie up money if we don't um, if it's not going to work that way. Yeah. Um, so the finance committee was so so let me just put hold on that. Um, finance committee was five hundred bucks. Okay. Accountant's expense. I think that was um, fairly straightforward from last year. Mm -hmm. um, assessor salaries. Um, assessor's uh, expense. I, I didn't think there was anything here either. Nope. Okay. I thought you were going to go through more of a budget schedule than actually go yeah. through the budget. So that's well, why I decided we um, are waiting for the seven o'clock hour. Yep. So um, I thought we'd run through this so that we could okay. pass this on to the finance committee. Skip wants to say something too. Oh, I'm, we're going to hold on legal because we're waiting for um, a proposal from Wendy's uh, proposing some different. Yeah, and I think I'll hold that until I get back because I really want to think about it. Um, to do a rather retainer. than a, um, a to do a flat retainer, a retainer yeah. yeah, which would also include additional services such as coming out yeah. quarterly and spending a day here, yeah. kind of attorney for a day. <laughs> um, it includes collective bargaining, um, all of that, and we're now using um, Lisa's uh, firm for uh, our labor issues as well, so we don't have that other law Do firm. they do the collective bargaining for yes. both school and police unions? I no. don't know if they do. No. Uh, well, they no, won't do the school. Schools, no, the schools, schools have, have there's a special lawyers. council that's been working with this. So a lot of the school districts. the school districts. department takes care of that. Anyway. Yes, they Correct. do. Okay. But they would do the police with us, yes. I would be concerned about using anyone other than someone who does labor council. That's who we've got. For that is what Kate Federoff does in, in that office. Okay. She handled all the contracts at the city of Brockton. We've been using her for personnel issues. She's very helpful, very responsive, and assures us that she's got collective bargaining, police bargaining experience. So I feel comfortable working, we're going that direction. Be a year or so before okay. I think this we have to sit down. This is all they have this year. Mm -hmm. This is what they used last year, but. Okay. Well, maybe. We don't have a dollar a month what? for that. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, 11000 Instead of 50. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. Oh. I'm sorry. I mean, one you union versus more. <laughs> I said <laughs> this is what we had okay. last year. Oh. Mm -hmm. No. So that's, are you okay with that? That's all. Can the, you, can you um, identify for it? So oh, peg access. Kate, um, capital. Yeah, so that's well. pass through money. Um, yeah, it's, I know. It, okay. And that's all that Chris came up with. Mm -hmm. um, Conservation it. Commission. Yeah. yeah. Open Space Committee. We're going to hold on the planning board because that wasn't sure. Ag Committee, 100. Um, town Office Expense. Um, Wendy, you have a line item back um, for IT hardware? Yes. I want to keep track of that. It gets, it had been for the last few years buried in, and it, we really need to, I think, keep track and designate money as we. You said last night it was in contracted services. So. It, ha it had been in contracted services. Now this so we're is for, pulling it back out again? Well, what are you we're just having it clear there so it's yeah. not yes. sort of, and we you're, can really track it that way. Doing. Okay. We, you know, we looked at it and didn't, I don't think anyone had a question. We spent it all what we thought you know had designated within that uh, within the first month of the fiscal. Not that much, huh? We didn't spend any money last year. Remember we did. That's another. You've been trying to just do the least you for town reports, and I thought it would be nice if we could actually go back to the town reports that you're used to doing. We've been squeezing deals out of staples and getting a very generic kind of thing. It's kind of your, the board decision. What do you think? I mean, 
I, I, the, the I don't we think we can do it. Adequate. I mean, it's still something. It has all the information. I mean, we could continue to do that, but we're not, still not going to. That's right. we're not going to be able to do it for twenty five hundred dollars. Okay. Well. And this year we will probably. You know, we may have need more. We didn't have a problem last year because um, we there was no one in the office, so we had money that we weren't spending for other things. So we were right. able to uh, cover expense. This is this is probably a more accurate expense. Five thousand okay. dollars is probably more accurate than twenty five hundred. Okay. And again, we we're talking year. a year and a half away, probably. No, a year. Yeah, a little more than a year away for that expense to be incurred because this is. Right. Yeah. Okay. And everything's going up. Well, the overall dollar amount's really not that big anyway, so. No, the big increase is moving the IT hardware back to this line item, but I, I, I think it is important to have accountability. Sure. And I think it's important that somebody be watching it. And so if you have a specific line item, then. Where was it before? It was in contracting. Uh, what it was, before that, when I was here last time, it, we had an item. So we I know, knew. but it got removed, yeah. and I, I don't think that was successful. Mm. At I least I did not feel it successful. Right. Um, personnel board expense. This is really for training. Um, it's it's uh, increase. It includes the dues and includes um, being able to have some personnel. They never had a budget really, but they, this is for training and um, dues to the the state organization, to which the I, I think mass is important. Municipal personnel association. Yeah. Workshops. Oh, they, yeah, the workshops could be beneficial yes. for them because a lot of times they're not really sure. They were very they interested. It was yeah. nice. Yeah, I mean, I think people are, if people are interested to be trained, I wholeheartedly support that. I think that's pretty that's much it. it. Yeah. Um, so do you want to um, vote to pass that on to the finance? We vote approval? Sure. How do we do them individually or as a group? Um, well, let's just read them off. Um, I make a motion to approve the moderating budget for 400, select board salaries for 16,000. Um, we're going to hold on that one. Finance committee for $500, uh, town accountant expense for $16,075, assessor salaries for 9,500, assessor's expense for 21,505. $21,505. Um, the recertification for $20,000, assessor's recertification. It's only nineteen, um, but. Oliver Smith trustees. Was that? It it's looks zero. like it's 20. Yes, Is, I we're researched zero? that. There's no reason. You've had 20 in it for years. It doesn't get spent. We I haven't paid them. anybody, and, and I guess there's no obligation to do so. And it's kind of like, okay. so Wendy said, let's take it out. Okay, so yeah, the, the, zero. The, the finance guy is real interested in. Legal expenses on hold. Pega access for 11,000. Conservation commission for 800. Open space committee for 250. Planning board's on hold. Um, Agricultural Commission is $100. Board is on hold? Or? Yes. Yes. Because we have to clarify. We have to clarify. Um, town office expense is 28000 Personal board expense is $1,500. No second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. There are a couple of other budgets further down if you want to take them. Um, I don't remember which, how far you had to go to get them. But, uh, well, I, didn't, I wanted to do the snow and ice. And the street lighting one, when Ke I wanted to make sure we talked to Kevin about those. Um, He's in the Council of Aging, we could do, I guess. Do you feel comfortable about that? $50, yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll do the Council of Aging. All those in favor? It, Aye. It, Aye. Any of those small items that you can get, we will be meeting on uh, January 6th, and all of those small items, budgets, we just like to approve and get them out of yep. the way sure. so that... Let me just put it down to okay. no. um, Veterans District Assessment for $10,063. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, ADA Coordinator for $250. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Who's keeping track of these? I am. Key is. We are. Okay. 
Veterans Day and a Memorial Day expense, 2000. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I, I want to hold on this one. Okay. That's the sick leave one. Yes. I just want to verify that that's the right amount. I haven't had a chance to talk with anyone. And I also want to, I, I, I wanted you to just think about it. I, we are increasing the OPEP to 25,000 from 10,000, which is a giant increase, but. Is that what we did last year was 10,000? Yes. One, We've done nothing. We've right, done nothing right, until, until 10. Until last year we did this week. nothing. I, I, I don't want to get an argument about what our liability is, but it's well over a million dollars. I think it's closer to $2 million, and this is a, a drop in the bucket. Yep. I, I think we should be putting in at least 50. But I just want you to think about it. It's not, I mean. Well, it's, 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 it's something that we're going to have to pay sooner or later anyways. And I'd but rather, I, uh, but I as think much as this is, when you figure it into our budget of, you know, was it 14, 10, million. 14 million, it's not a big amount. Um, uh, and if we finance. don't keep doing something, yes. eventually we're going to get hammered with it. But we're, we're it's trouble. just it, kicking it, it, the can we down. We have no yeah. problem with the 25. I think what, uh, I, I mean, we really didn't discuss a dollar amount. One of the discussions was that we would like to have a conversation with with whoever is responsible for putting the, the numbers out of that. So at least I would like to hear from them. And uh, I'd kind of like to have Tommy Scanlon there at that point in time. So that, you know, and let's, let's is get this, a discussion. Isn't this the year that we have to do the um, actual pay for the actual audit anyway? The actuarial study? Yes. Um, uh, I don't know. And, it and could, so it could be this could be what it's every three years. Remember, I, that's why yeah. I backed off. But we have and one I, in 15. Because I said it's not use. I don't want to argue about it, but I can tell you it's closer to two million dollars than it is one million. And, and the last thing that I that we need to get we need to do something with, uh, and I think you know where my position on it is. We need we need those salary items because it's you know that's 80 percent of the budget. I know. So uh, can I just say one last thing about sure. the OPEP? Um, we need an op we need a policy, and that policy policy should guide what we do, and I think we can do that pretty easily when I get back. And I think Barbara is actually working on that. Well, um, also if we if we get if we know if we can get some basic agreement on what our liability is, you heard my argument last night, and and, and I I'm really troubled by uh, just one million, two million, whatever it is. Uh, where it comes from. I want to know where it comes from. I want somebody to sit down and explain to me. We had a whole workshop on it. Yeah. On what? On OPEP. You were there. But, but no one there was able to explain. I, what, basically what I want somebody to do, let's take an individual. I don't think there's anybody that is going to give you an absolute. If you can't do that, then you need to, how do you come up with those figures? I want to know how they come the, up with the figures. Did they not explain that at the workshop? I don't yes, know. Yes, they did they explain. Did that, well, they explained as best they could. It's just an estimate. And this is what the argument is. It's just an estimate. And the estimate was $1.7 million. And this was, what, two years ago was, or three years not ago? Not when I was here. How long ago was it, Scott? Uh, two or three years. Yeah. So. And we put nothing towards it except ten thousand dollars. So, I'm sure it's at least one point well, eight or one point nine. The position that we're in with salaries, where we're paying in addition okay. to whatever salaries we're putting out, that between nine and eleven percent is what the individual employees pay into the retirement fund, and then we need to kick in another eighteen percent on top of that. It's absurd. Quite I honestly. know. I know. So, I'm before we get into that situation with OPEP. I yeah, really but at like fifty, th even if we do fifty thousand dollars a year, we're not even going to get close. So it's not really. That's why it's silly to argue whether it's one point seven million or one point three million, or it doesn't matter, Skip, because we're not. not we're never going to get close. We are going to get close because we're not going to have a choice but to get close. I, I just so want us to be a little bit more fiscally responsible, okay. that's all. Well, I, I can see your point, but I see Skip's point as well. I, and I, and, I and it is, we, we need to put the money aside 
but th this uh, invisible moving target, if you will. It is. How do we know what it is? We and don't. I, I was first. shocked when but I went to the MMA I, I, conference. I don't believe it's moving. It's not a very it, fluid. It, they, the studies come up with the same amount pretty well. Well, well we, like he said, we know they, we have a ballpark figure of you know the employee salaries and stuff like that, and we can g guesstimate at their retirements and stuff like that. So, I think we could get an idea. I mean, someplace along yeah. the way, somebody's got to take that information and plug it into a computer someplace. The computer cranks out the. Somebody had to write the program. To, right. I, the people who are running this thing can't explain it, and I want. Skip, I don't know if it was three or four years ago. You know, I was absolutely flabbergasted when I went and I heard agree. this, and and and, 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 I, and it was not anything that had ever even came up in discussion before. And so all of a sudden, we're slapped with this huge liability. So well, how do we currently fund, um, you know, retirees? Our we pay as we go. We pay as we go. Yeah. They're doing it at the retirement board. Yeah, that's we. It's in our budget. Okay. So, but anyway, so Skip, before, um, can I can I just um, we we have seven o'clock. We have Pat here. So can I ask you just to hold off for two few minutes so we can talk to Pat? There's a, they're doing a meeting in there that I'm going to go to. And if we get to oh, okay. Board, so go, go ahead. So I will be back. Okay. Okay. I, I just don't want Pat to um, be stuck here. Okay. No. Come on up. I'm go to the Thank you. Okay. Where are the hearings for? Uh, uh, district rates setting. Uh, Classification. Pat, thank you. Could you just introduce yourself when you have a chance? Yes, I'm going to hand these out to you, and then I will go back to the table. And, uh, everybody know who I am? <laughs> it's nice you? to see you. Lovely to see both of you. It's been a while. It's been so quiet here. Okay. Okay. She's uh, here a little bit preliminarily. Yes. So I'm Pat Smith. I'm from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. I'm a senior land use planner there. And one of the things that uh, we've been helping the town of Deerfield do over the course of the last year, we've been working with the town to gather the information to complete the Green Community's annual reports, which hadn't been done in a number of years. So you have before you the partial draft of everything that we've been able to pull together to provide to the Department of Energy Resources. And it is um, still a draft, so just to give you a little bit of an introduction to what you're looking at. So DOER sends us back this form. Anything that is in green, um, they have filled out. We don't need to look at it. If it's highlighted in yellow, that's an area that uh, the town needs to update. And I have further, in some cases, uh, so if you look at this like first big pull-out page, it's criterion three, step four, table four, you'll see some pink highlights in there. And those are just a couple of uh, data points you'll see in a few places that I still need to fill in between now and the due date of this report, which is next Monday. It does need to be signed by you guys. So knowing that this is a crazy time of year with schedules and everything, I wanted to come during this regularly scheduled meeting so that uh, we could discuss it and hopefully get a signature on that first page and then get any input that you would have so that I could incorporate that into the final submission that will go in on Monday. This report covers three fiscal years, fiscal year 15, 16, and 17. We've worked over the course of the last year and somewhat frantically in really focusing month. on this in the last <laughs> six weeks or so. So um, I've had the opportunity, I've worked with um, your, the software program that was provided free by the state is called Mass Energy Insight. That's where all your energy use data is input. Some of that is automatically input from the, uh, the, uh, your utility providers for electric, but all the others, your propane, your diesel, your uh, gasoline usage for vehicles and so forth, that all has to be gathered from either the department or the vendor and then input uh, manually into that system. So that's what I've been working on doing. Um, we had, there were things we had to do, adjustments to make, um, uh, take account of the, the new DPW building and the deaccessioning and then removal of the old highway garage. So there's have to be calculations in here. 
because um, it's comparing apples and oranges. The yeah. buildings are radically different in mm -hmm. size, and so to, to track your energy usage over time, you have to adjust that. So there's been a number of those things that uh, we've been working on, and um, a couple of issues have come up at the uh, old Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant, following up on some of their um, energy conservation measures that have been put in there, and I still need a little bit of um, detail back on what has happened with those final measures and when they were completed. We've also been following up on um, the solar panels that were installed there. There have been a number of issues with their, ma their uh, production, their maintenance over time, and, and we've had to make adjustments for that. I think there's still some remediation work that uh, I know Kevin has been working on to get those fully panels functional. operating, fully operational. So there's been a lot of information we've had to pull together, and I want to take this opportunity to thank virtually every staff member in the town of Deerfield who has been really, really, everybody's just been extremely helpful in getting information uh, to me. Uh, Key's gotten involved, Pat Kroll, Priscilla Phillips helped, Brenda Hill, Deborah Austin, and the chief both provided information. Kevin's been extremely helpful. The Energy Committee. The Energy Committee has been great, David uh, Gilbert. Keith has been extremely MA helpful in pulling information together as well. So it's been all hands on deck, and I think um, we're, we're really close to having all this information together. The reason why this matters is that um, the town has, I think, come close to completing all of the original energy conservation measures that you promised to do in your designation grant. Mm -hmm. And so you'd be in a position then to uh, go for additional grants, competitive grants, municipal energy technical assistance grants, other grants that might be available from DOER, but you have to file your annual reports in order for uh, them to consider you eligible for this. And it has subsequent to be no grant. later than 5 p.m. on December That's 11th. That's right. Yes. So I make a motion that we sign this <laughs> right now. <laughs> I second the motion. The All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Pat, um, I just did want to talk a little bit about I, I mean I'm so appreciative you're doing this so that we can be eligible for another round yes. and hopefully we can oh, use I think them. only one of you just um, yeah just so I, I was wondering are you um, coordinating um, uh, with the is, are, are you making sure the other towns um, Wendy had said that Sunderland is is highly ranked. Hi, highly <laughs> ranked and then um, I, I just didn't know if you were um, knew anything about Conway and Waitley are they sort of Okay, because we, we want to use some of this grant money from for the frontier work. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are um, you sorry, working? I was, I, was, I, was, I was waiting are to you, get to the. Are you working with the other um, frontier towns? We are not working with all of them. We are working with some of them, and I can certainly go back and uh, review that for you, Carolyn, and see what well, everybody's status is to see if everyone is eligible. Well, we actually, I was saying earlier in the meeting, talking. I thanked people. Thank you for thanking them again. <laughs> and I thanked you, too, because this has been, I don't know how we do it without this I, I know. I, I'm really appreciative. And this is money that we um, can use towards the frontier. That's right. Yeah. I mean, we already um, have projects the in mind. one thing I will say to you, uh, and I'm sure you're in discussion with DUER about this, but thanks. Um, so frontier is not included in your baseline for right. your your. Right. We are designation grant. So you can't use any of the initial funds for that. Once you have documented that you've reached your 20% energy reduction That's what reduction Sunderland, goal. Sunderland is maybe, I think Jim told us, Jim Barry told us in a group meeting, uh -huh. Sunderland may be the only community in the state that's reached that goal? Um, they're one of the very few communities okay. in the state that has reached All their right. 20% Certainly that, uh, goals. That it's size a very community. limited number. It's interesting, I was just looking earlier today at um, your figures over time. So you can get generating from Mass Energy Insight, uh, you can look at comparisons. So your baseline year was 2009. So each year they calculate the total number of MMBTUs that all of your various energy use, you know, boils down to and compare it year to year and to that, that baseline. So the critical thing is you want to reduce 20% from that baseline. According to the figures in Mass Energy Insight, you accomplished that in 2012, but it has, then it's gone down. Well, the so, highway garage has been a huge, I mean, the energy bills for that new highway garage are. Well, as I said, those, so we, there are adjustments made in here. So the highway garage is some 13,000 square feet. The new one, the old one, the conditioned space, which was the heated space, 
was about 1,600 square feet. So we are only accounting, we are only counting in these final numbers about 12% of the energy use of the new garage so that it can compare back right. to that original one. So it doesn't so have an impact. Well, I, I understand. Hmm. So that minimizes the impact in that comparison. And nonetheless, there is, there is energy usage that sure. you are paying for sure. there. Yep. And you know, that, that is certainly something that, that can be addressed. In reviewing these numbers, um, the adjusted figures came out for uh, FY 2017 uh, to a 15% reduction from your 2009 usage figures. And, and, and without, what do you attribute that to? Without going into it in great detail, it looks like it's uh, mostly attributable to increases in um, gasoline and diesel for vehicles. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised. <laughs> so, and, and, and so, so you get into these data, there may be some additional questions that need to be asked. So you see- I thought police vehicles were exempt, aren't they? Uh, well, you, you, they're exempt from the purchasing policy, but you count their usage. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, um, so looking at just vehicles between, 20, between fiscal 29 and 2017, the, um, the usage went up about 36%. During that time frame, the highway department vehicle usage went up 50%. 50%? Yeah, and that started with a really steep increase in 2014. And I was only just able to generate these final tables in the last day or two, because Mass Energy Insight, you have to put what? all the data in and wait a day or two for it to come up. So I want to talk to Kevin about that. One of my concerns is that we'd mentioned in an earlier meeting that at some point the ambulances came mm -hmm. on, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering if That's perhaps- when that their gasoline usage may be in here? That's just something that I don't, I, you know, that was my- Oh, you know what? I'm not sure about that. that. I want to follow up that. That could be that we are, um, you, would, you would have the ambulances, so we should be able to- I don't to know where they separate. fill up. Where do they I work? thought they filled up separately. No, they fill they up do. at the highway garage, but, but it, they're, they're billed separately. I, that's what I thought from Kevin, and I want to just double check okay. that, because it, is, it jumps from, um, it jumps considerably. Detroit. The other thing is, um, 2013 and 2014. Um, 20, that, that 2014 was a bad winter. It was a particularly bad winter. It was a huge, huge bad winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm sure That's we right. used, we, we doubled our, our snow and ice budget more than tripled that year. Yeah. yeah. So um, the only, I mean, we were like, well, whatever it was, we were in the almost 200,000. So mm -hmm. I think it was 183,000 or something. So um, is there migrating or mitigating facts that you can make, make adjustments to that 15%? Weather. Weather. Well, so, so DOER has been attempting over the years to do what they call weather normalization of these data so that you can kind of iron out some of those things from year to year to take account for the number of particularly cold days or particularly hot days. They've been having difficulty making uh, those adjustments to their data, and, and we've gotten an instruction from Jim Barry to not even report it off of MEI from this year because they don't feel that it is that they can well, rely I mean, on we, that data if we at this if we achieve the 20% I, w I would have to say that there are factors that we could chase down because right right I and one of the things that we've talked about with the energy committee and and with Wendy is uh, looking into anti idling technologies that would be applicable to some of the vehicles not to all but it is, you could, there's special adaptations aftermarket adaptations you can put on a vehicle that has to run all the time like a some trucks or police cruisers wouldn't have ambulance, on, ambulance where they can they can run it on the lowest level so it doesn't suck the battery down and it doesn't utilize a lot of gasoline and so we share a little bit of information about that something that potentially if you go for a grant you could go for the money then to purchase that anti-idling technology and and this certainly provides you a basis for arguing that that would be helpful to the town so I have on, if you look on your copies there, when you get to criterion three instructions, which is, of course, the pages aren't numbered, it's your third page in. If you look at number six, and if you can read that, you have better <laughs> eyes than I. Um, that's where I provide a narrative about the history and identify some of the issues and suggest remediation. So I would particularly bring that to your attention if you wanted to um, look at that tomorrow or the next day and suggest um, edits to that. That's a really key 
piece of um, the report that uh, I have developed for you, and I would certainly welcome any input um, from you in order I, to. I guess I, I, having gone down to the 20%, I, I feel like we should be justifying something. And um, if we could get Kevin to give some explanation, I think that would be really fantastic. Yeah, I was going to send this off to him tomorrow completed. He, he's been great. I feel guilty sending him something else, but I, there, I think that the, yeah, just but if this, more, he's been very helpful in providing this key context and other issues, like with the, the, the solar panels at the uh, uh, old Deerfield Waste Water Treatment Plant. Yeah. So um, I certainly want to give him the opportunity to, to comment and see if there's yeah. any particular but thing if that he we could can, offer as an explanation uh, and or remediation approach. Yeah, I, I, I feel like we... Um, if we've achieved the 20%, I want to be able to say that we've maintained that 20%, and there were extenuating circumstances or something. Well, I mean, the figures are what they are. So I know, what we have to we do could, is we have to, we have to work going forward to get back to 20%, right. and if there, if there are particularly... Or, or explained away or something so that, yeah. so that when we go to apply for money, we're, we're actually using the money for something that we really want, but also... They, they will give us consideration on that, right. you know. I mean, right. we want to say, oh, well, what about this? You know, we could whine a little. You know, Pat. Well, and, and you know, <laughs> one thing I will say about DOER is they are really great about working with communities. They want communities to succeed, right? So they will look at this report and they will come back with questions, with suggestions of yeah. their own, and we'll we'll work with well, you in I, order to yeah. get well, to your I 20 percent be and beyond. To, I, I just want to be in the position that we can use green money for, um, for the work at Frontier. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, that's where I think it came out that really Sunderland was the only one as a lead town in that possibility. Yeah, I haven't seen a recent list, but really the, Cambridge is one of the few towns oh, well, that has would, yeah. met. You know, it's just, it's really hard. And I'm going to tell mean, you. among us. The, the, out here in Franklin yeah. County, um, very few communities. And often it is the vehicle use that is driving their inability to get, pardon the pun, uh, to get to that 20% because, uh, you know, the buildings, so your, your buildings, you've made it. You've done things to the buildings, you're, you've made a 21% reduction on your buildings, yep. okay? I know. Um, you've done things with your street lights that have brought that usage down. It's a small proportion of your overall energy usage, but the things that you have done have made a difference. But it is the, uh, the vehicles, uh, you know, it's just the nature of small towns that uh, it tends to be a real challenge to get over I, that usage. Yeah, I just wonder if we're getting, um, you know, the, all three of ambulances. Um, I want to confirm that to see yeah. if, they, if those are in there. If those are in there, I think we could justify a, uh, a reduction by taking that out. Yeah. I think that would, I think that would be valid. I, I do too, because that's a new. Although that you know, the question is who owns those vehicles, right? And yes, I think that has changed over the course of this we, time. Yes. The town now owns them when you did not before. We owned one, and now well. Well, now it's a twenty-four-seven operation. Right. Right. And so there's multiple and the multiple vehicles. That is a huge difference. It's a huge. Difference. And we should not be. We should. There should be some accommodation for that. So that. So I, I'll get a little bit more information, and that would be one of the things okay. that I would be consulting with Jim well, Barry about this week before I even put this. Uh, but if you you ask in. Kevin, I think he could tell you how many gallons of usage went to the ambulance people, and that that gallon that should be re taken should right be taken out of it out. because yeah. Deerfield is only a partial owner of those. You know. The ambulances are owned yes. by the he South gave, He gave me, he was kind enough to consolidate the data and just give me fiscal year figures, so I don't have the full breakdown. Right, right. So I, I need to confirm with him yeah. what is included yeah. in that. And I, I agree, if the ambulance data is in there, I think we make the case to DOER that that can be removed. How did he give it to you? Because the police department get gas there too, as well. I don't. We got, no, we got the, police the police department gas uh, information directly from mm -hmm. The police department. Okay. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they don't. The police to buy it, and I, and I suspect the ambulance too, to buy it at or gas stations. The gas stations. We have it for emergency use. I mean, okay. we have tanks. Well, I do know the ambulance fill up there quite a bit, and and I have seen the ambulances at um, Dunkin' Donuts every single day, so I'm sure they could be filling the gas tank <laughs> and, and getting coffee. Whatever. Okay, oh. Pat. Thank yes. you. Yes. Is there anything else that you wanted to go over with us? 
I don't think so, um, unless we I have additional I can't questions. Thank you enough As I for said, doing there are a few this. pink highlighted things I'll be I'm in just touch. here tomorrow and then. I know. So I sent this out already. You'll see it in your inbox okay. when you get there. Um, there's one or two documents that perhaps you could help me find tomorrow that help fill in a couple okay. of these pink things. And, um, and or we come up with a strategy for where else I can find okay. that information. Worst case scenario, we, we, we submit it with as much information as we can possibly provide, and then the OER will you know work with know. us. But we will get, this will be submitted on Monday. This is the Definitively, I can tell you that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, guys. And uh, right. in case I don't see you again before, then I hope you have a wonderful oh, holiday yeah, season. Oh, you Thanks. too, Pat. Thank you. And um, again, we're very appreciative you did this. It was very well, nice. We have a grant to do it, and we're happy to. It mm -hmm. makes all the difference in the world, I know, to the towns to have additional help. You've got great administrative staff, but there's never enough to do everything that has to be done. Well, and this the other thing. is a full-time job. That's why. Doing that green energy, green community stuff. It's um, a lot of work. It's, it's complicated. I did it when I was here before, and I said, oh, my. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> Yeah, so but it's we also we're happy to help, and you know we'll always look for opportunities to get grants that we can come back to the towns. And but I but I also them. feel like it's really important because um, we have to. I mean, we have these expenses at Frontier that are coming up, so right. are, to are be you, in a position is huge. Sorry. No, no, no. Just we need to be in a position to participate and have our money be coming apart from the grant money rather than taxpayer money if we have an opportunity. I was just wondering what other energy programs you're involved with or others at COG? Because when Jim came to the meeting with the town administrators and the uh, school administrators, he listed a whole range of different options, other programs. There are lots to and what lots extent so they just spur came. COG help? I mean, Jim is a one-man operation for the whole of Western <laughs> Mass, but He's amazing. we need a little bit more assistance, I think. Then. Yeah, so, we, so we're so we helping with this through a Municipal Energy Technical Assistance Grant. Those are available on an annual basis. So this was from 2016. It will be completing uh, this coming May. We've also, we're able to apply this last year for another META 2017 grant, and that one is a pastor. It was the first time they were allowing that, where RPAs could apply on behalf of Regional planning the towns too. as a group. And um, that we got money so that they could do their ASHRAE level two audits of their buildings. A couple of them are towns that have, are not yet green communities, others that have applications pending and need more data to add in. So that's another, there's, there's, there's more information coming down every day about uh, new grants for um, electrical vehicle charging stations. We just got information right. about a new program through the utility today for that. There's, there's a lot of different grants for, for different Would things. You, could you help the school? They need Not under these now where it is not included in your baseline. You could okay. not use any of the money right. to help with the how, school. How about um, if, if we um, get the church um, as a new community center, would you be able to work on that? I mean, it isn't on our baseline, but we would be moving our senior center from that building yeah. to the new building. Yeah, so your senior center, it, 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 it's, we might be able to help with that as a new building. We'd have to look at, so, and you can always go back, you could, for Frontier and for any new building, you can always go back and redo your baseline, right? But that's a lengthy and complicated process. You wanna make sure that it would be beneficial to the town to go through that. Mm -hmm. One, and we've looked into this for the town of Warwick. That's why I've known, I've, I know a little bit about this because that's what they wanted to work on their elementary school and it's not in their baseline. So there was a lot of back and forth with Jim about what we could do, what we couldn't do, what they could do, what they couldn't do. And then the thing, the problem is when it's a regional school, so you, you go to all of the effort of including it in the baseline and then you get some small proportion of the savings, mm -hmm. right? So in, in Warwick's case, they were gonna get 10% of the savings from any energy conservation measure that was put in at the school. So they were gonna go through this whole process and really get nothing out of it mm -hmm. in terms of their making their 20%. Now you have a different goal. You don't wanna necessarily, you wanna to get to 20% so that you can, not for the energy savings, you don't wanna benefit from the energy savings from Frontier, you wanna to get to Frontier. Right. So it might be worth your while to talk with Jim about um, adjusting the baseline if it looks like the communities aren't going to be in a position to get to the 20% and, uh, and to utilize additional funds from other grant opportunities. Would you, would you just keep your ear to the ground for, the, for our senior center then, for us too? Yeah, 
we okay. can, I, I can start discussion with Jim about how that would work in, in future okay. years because I know that's something that's planned. Yeah, I mean, there's a few things. We, we definitely want to do insulation. You know, there's windows. Sure. sure. I mean, those are a couple fairly easy things. What, some other things besides insulation windows you can think of? No, it's primarily it was an insulation problem. Insulation windows. That's yeah, and that weatherization yeah. really shows. It's a big bang for your buck on the money you spend on weatherization. Yeah, I, I, I think a really insulation was a huge thing. Um, I, <laughs> I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everybody the problems that this community has faced time and time again about building buildings that are properly insulated. We pay through the nose for that mistake dearly, with yearly energy costs and and you know repairs down the road that could totally be you know eliminated if the jobs were done right the first time. I'm, okay. I'm I agree with you. I'm I'm 100% in your corner on that. Chris, so hindsight is 2020. <laughs> That's very true. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Pat, so All right, much. Well, thank uh, you so much. And as I said, if you have any additional comments in the next day or two that you want to share with me, I'd be happy to incorporate them into the draft. Okay. And, and you and I will communicate tomorrow. I'll be in after a telephone conference. I'll be. I'll send you a message. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Just Late, sure we'll, I'll be make here sure from. Before you go away. I'll be here from two thirty till midnight. Oh gosh. Well, I won't be calling you at midnight. Okay. So closer to two thirty <laughs> for me. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. All right. I mean, I'll be here earlier, but in and out for things. So okay. definitely well, a straight shoot that. from there. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Skip, you, you want to keep us late tonight? Yeah, just <laughs> very short, because you guys need to call it quick. You've been here two hours, almost. So this is. This is the salary schedule with the 2% mm -hmm. call in it. You've got one. Yeah, it's adjusted from, it, it's this year plus 2% adjusted into the. And one, you know, we, we kind of beat the salary schedule to death last year in trying to, the arguments one way or the other. And one of the things that, and I, I tried to do, and I'm not going to go into the explanation. I talked with both of you a little bit about that earlier, but was to try to identify what it is that's driving the salary, the cost of employees, and, and uh, uh, the first thing, obviously, is whenever you do a COLA, if it's a 1% COLA, then your salaries are necessarily going to go up by 1%. Uh, what's the, you know, you know, we've heard the, the, the thing about steps, that people are going to get a 6% raise because they get a step. And uh, my, my answer to that, as best I can, is to say, if you take a look at the, the positions Let's take a look at uh, what is step one, or step two, excuse me, grade two. Wastewater treatment plant operator, heavy equipment operator, uh, I'm not sure, something or other, adult circulation, uh, assistant <laughs> town clerk. And you look at the top step, step 10, $23.87. And, and this is a rhetorical question, so I'm not looking for an answer. Do you see any of those positions that are being overpaid at $23.87? And we have people in those positions that are on the top step. And I said it's a rhetorical question, so let me go on. It's easier to if, it's, if you don't see that, that's a, that's, that salary at $23.87 is... Uh, is unreasonable, then I would have to suggest that anyone paid less than twenty three eighty seven is a bargain. Yep. It's just easier to read. So if you've got somebody that's on step four at eighteen fifty six, we should be jumping for joy. I'm being a little facetious here, but because the there is that if if the top step is reasonable, 
why are we arguing about people that are being paid less than that? And that's the, and we those are the people that we're actually arguing about. Nobody seems to be arguing about the person who's reached the top step and it took them ten years to get there, at least. So, I don't know. Does that does that I see what I, or argument make some sense? I, I see what you're saying. But you have to. Th that's an assumption that everybody. <laughs> is extremely well qualified and has a lot of experience doing that. And that's not the case with some of these people. I mean, we have some of these people that are making close to that amount and have only been on a job for three or four years and they don't really have a lot of experience and it's not really a, a skilled position anyways. And a lot of these rates are more than the going rate that you'd find out in the, I, I promise I won't say the real world, um, in, in the private sector. Uh, there you go. You know, so, so I, 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 I see your argument, but we'll just take a heavy equipment operator. If you hire somebody that's newly, let's say a 23-year-old, and he just got his license, and he's been operating for six months or something like that, he's not worth much more than 16 or $17. I agree. Now, you know? And that's why we're And not it takes anymore. a long time to get up to that higher rate. So in 10 so, years, mm -hmm. let's, let's say you've got a heavy equipment operator mm -hmm. with 10 years of experience, mm -hmm. would you hire that person for $24 an hour? Yeah. Then if you've got but, somebody with nine years. But the problem with what, what you're suggesting is that in, in, in the private sector, you have an operator that has 10 years experience, he's really good and stuff like that, and he's getting $24 an hour. Next year, he might get a Christmas bonus of $1,000. He's not going to get a big raise. You're not going to get these people keep going up and up and up and up and up. Well, and that's what you're getting $24 an hour, and we had a 2% COLA. Next year, they're going to get $24.48. They're well, not going to get a big raise. That's, I, have, I have another issue with that because what, what you're do, if I'm following this schedule right, these rates that are on here were this past year's rates plus a 2%. Yes. So all these were okay. So this figure. So is it, if this is going to be the new schedule, so next year that's already going to be two years. What, I, what I'm saying is, is that you're passing that two percent on this year, and then you're going to add two percent on more. So it's, yes. a, it's a continual raise, you know. Well, I mean, I, I'm on Social Security, mm -hmm. so if I'm getting a thousand dollars a month, mm -hmm. two percent, twenty bucks. Mm -hmm. So now I'm getting. Is it right? Did I do that right? Yeah, two percent, twenty bucks. Yeah. Now on this, so next year I'm going to get a thousand and twenty dollars. If I get two percent next year, it's a thousand and forty dollars and twenty cents or forty cents. But on Social Security, the government doesn't always give you a two percent. Well, I, I understand. But what I'm saying is, if if it is a two percent, right. we're talking about twenty dollars mm -hmm. on a thousand dollar a month. Uh, so, and if if the cost of living and, and that's a, it's it's a cola cost of living allowance or cost of yeah cost of living allowance or adjustment. If uh, we try to set that, I would hope. Uh, but since we haven't been doing it for the past decade or close to the past decade, it's kind of a new experience. Uh, and you know, it is what it it is supposed to be to handle. The changes in the cost of living it was the discussion, and you brought it up. In fact, mm -hmm. I don't think we've really had a cola since um, the economy crashed in 2008. Yeah, well, but I mean, no, I was going to say, but that's 10 years; it's a decade. Yeah, but there were the step increases, so it's no yeah, different. It's it's yeah. money's money's money. But, but if you were sitting at the top step, and yep. what happened? We had people sitting at the top step, and they weren't getting anything. So the selectmen, you know decided to, you know, well, we'll give them 1.7% was the, the number that we used a couple of years. A call, for lack of a better term, that's sure. essentially what it was. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's tough to say to any, anyone that, you know, your, if your cost of living went up, we're not going to make some effort to cover that or a portion or maybe a little bit more. But I would agree, if, you're t if we decided to do a cost of living allowance increase of 5%, I would be screaming. And I may have to get behind you guys, but 
you know, there's, there's, a, there's something that's reasonable. I thought 2% was reasonable. It's what Social Security is using next year, from what I understand. It was reported in the, in the paper, anyways. Uh, my point was that there are two things here that affect that truly affect what it cost us for labor. It's the COLA and the top step. Because all of the other steps are essentially driven by that top step. When we put the salary schedule together a year ago, we may have started with a bottom, but we looked at the top. No, so we, if the top we, was 25 bucks, we and we thought it, it should have been 20, then, then we, we might have moved it to 20 and then backed it off. We had a problem last year when we did this because we had a couple of employees, or at least one, who no matter what we did to the salary schedule, we couldn't get them into the salary schedule. That, that person or those people are above the salary schedule. If you want to drive down labor costs, keep a good tight handle on your coals. It's not going to have a big impact, but if you can cut it a half a percent this year, a half a percent next year, quarter of a percent the year after, the old the old saying I forgot what the what the senator's name was, but a billion dollars here, a billion dollars there. Pretty soon you're talking real money. Well, a few hundred dollars here, a few hundred dollars there for the town, or a few thousand dollars here and a few thousand dollars there, and you really are talking money. I think the two percent coal is going to cost the town. Approximately twenty thousand bucks. So next year maybe it's one and a half percent, um, or or whatever. But stay away from you know we can stay away from the three and four percent, which is typically. Well, I, I'm, I've been following what you're saying, but I, I I'm I'm not following. What, what point are you trying to get to though? The the point that I'm trying to get to is we, we're spending an awful lot of time worrying about the person who's being paid below that top step. And nobody disagree, Nobody seems to disagree with the top step. Everybody seems to think that top step in each one of these grades is, is a reasonable cost. And if it's reasonable to pay somebody $40 an hour, why are we worrying about the person who's making 30 bucks an hour doing the same job, or essentially the same job? I agree, they're not as experienced, but that's why they're getting 30 bucks rather than 40. Exactly. And, and there are cases where people have been doing something for 10 years and people have been doing things for two years and people have been doing it for two years do a much better job than the people who do it for 10 years. And, and, and then I suggest that we should be doing is we should be taking a look at that person who's been here for 10 years and say, hey, you know, you're not doing your job. Well, there's... Or you're not doing it the way we expect that you're doing it. You either have to get up to our standards or get out. Well, you know, and, and that's always been, uh, I, I've seen it so often, it's a very kind of a, how do I want to say it? It's different, it's, it's with individuals. And, and a quick example is, it's quarter, you get out of work at three o'clock and it's quarter to three. One guy packs up all his stuff in the truck, heads back to the highway garage. The other guy says, well, I've got 15 minutes, let me go clean out these two more catch basins, I won't have to do them tomorrow. And he gets back there right. See, that's what I'm saying. One person's motivated and the other one's, you know, I, I, you know, my day's almost done, I'm giving in. And, and that's an individual thing. And it's up to the supervisor to, mm -hmm. to recognize those two things. Yes. And so if the person who would rather clean out these other two catch basins, you know, if he ends up making more money than the guy that's been here 10 years, I don't have a problem with that. That's the way it should be. You should be rewarded for hard work and dedication, not just because you've been there for 10 years, you know? That's the way I look at things. But. You're fighting an uphill battle because everyone in this town <laughs> is paid on, on the step system. Whether it's here, whether it's the police department, oh. whether it's the schools. I understand, but, but, but you know, that's why I can, I, I can agree with the cost of living increase for, you know, for a variety of different reasons, but the, uh, just just because you've been here another year, you go up another step. That's what I don't agree with. You know, and, but, you know I place place the you know if you've get if you get another evening during the month that you want to uh, give to the town in one form or another, then I would suggest <laughs> you run for school committee and fight the battle there because that's where the real battle is. 
difference. I, I, I understand. I understand. And if, and if we're going to pay one group of, of employees and we're going to, you know, acquiesce to the way that their salaries increase, which is by steps, and they get a cola and they get a step, and yeah, if you look back, you'd say, wow, they got a 0% COLA a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But then they got 3% and a 3% for the next two years, so they averaged 2%. I look, I'm, I, look, I, I, I look at the bigger picture, and you know, if you go back 15 years ago in our community, what our taxes were, and you know, it seems every year we go up the maximum that we can go up, and sometimes we have overrides or debt exclusions that actually increase that cost more. Now we've gotten to a point No, we've where never had an override, because I don't believe in an override. Well, skip, but, skip but, we've but had many of our... the is the well, same excuse, thing, you know, yes. whatever well, it is. That, that we, send, we send a larger tax bill To up. me, it the might, override, ha you have to have change, it's a one-time fix that you change your, whatever you're doing. Uh, okay, I stand corrected, but the bottom, okay. my point was that the tax bills continue well, to go up. No. And that now we've we've come to this uh, level of two percent going up is a big dollar amount, and that we're we're shortly heading to the thing is, on uh, the average homeowner is going to be start seeing four or five hundred dollars increase every single year, you know, and and that's going to progressively keep getting larger until we can control how well, we spend the, money. The, the tax rate in town, which is. The tax, the tax that we can collect, mm -hmm. or what we can collect from taxes, is limited by Prop Two and a Half to two and a half percent, plus whether there's new growth in town. So you would normally think that our tax rate pretty much would be stuck in about going up two and a half percent, and yet we went from I don't know what the number was, but fifteen dollars. Tonight, fifteen dollars and forty-five cents to fifteen dollars and ninety cents. Ninety-five. Ninety-five. It's a four percent increase. So, in order for that to be to happen, necessarily the total tax, the amount that we can collect, or not the amount that we can collect, the tax base actually had to decline. We've been losing houses off the tax roll. Businesses so have been leaving. So we've got property either going off the tax roll. Yep. We've got property that's being assessed at a lower rate. Well, I think I mean, the, or, the, the property you know, has been, been assessed at a higher been, rate. Well, no, the property assessment has actually dropped. That's the mm. problem. And, and right. so what happens is the rate increases it, yeah. faster than the overall thing. Well, I, it's what. 25 years since we built the elementary school and, and in this auditorium the big thing was hey Deerfield's tax rates only three dollars you know per thousand so second lowest in the state well fifteen dollars a thousand it was three dollars a thousand no back then yes mm -hmm. that's what it was and, and and I was the only one it was counting I don't remember and, and we'll three dollars we can go back and, and take a look well I remember I, it being I, down I, around ten but I remember the assessor um, not the current ones, but, and he, he was going on, and, and I was looking around, and I remember looking at some attorneys and accountants, and so I raised my hand, and I says, I don't care if the tax rate's 50 cents. It's a combination of what the tax rate is and what the assessment of my house is. So if the tax rate's 50 cents and you assess my house at $4 million, I'm still going to pay a boatload of money. And that was the point I was trying to make. And, and so the tax rate has really gone up a lot, so has the valuations. And, you know, our taxes on the average house has gone from, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars to three to four thousand dollars and, and, and upwards of that. I don't even know what the average well, the house first, is. The first year, my tax bill the first year after we moved in was about three hundred bucks and now it's forty five hundred. So, mm -hmm. uh -huh. you know, I know mine's slightly more. Yeah. A little bit. But no matter what we do, yeah. we, we've got, what, 14, 18 employees that are covered here? Mm -hmm. And we could, you, could, you could reduce, you could fire them all. It's and your, in your Wouldn't make much difference. It, it's, it's not going to have any dramatic effect. Well, obviously, if you fired up, it would. But. 
you wouldn't get the I mean, services. If they, if they were but, willing to work for zero dollars. I, I get your point, and I, and I understand that. And, and you're right, the schools are another problem. It's just we, we need to get a better handle on it. But it, it turns, it's nothing more than individuals, you know, being interested in helping the community. I, so there are some things that um, are definitely very important. And I know when I went to the, up the frontier, um, there was a gentleman asking about you know, this cost and that cost. And there was another woman who stood up and she was on a, a school committee from one of the neighboring towns. And she was very concerned because she, she made it all about the kids and you know, the kids and the children. And I have children and I love them just as much as anybody else does. But I wanted to know, what did a $90,000 lawnmower have to do with the education of her children? Or what did you know, the $106,000 for this have to do with the education of her children? We're not saying we're going to take away a teacher's aid or a textbook or this. There's a lot of money that's spent around these things that are big dollar things. $18,000 to paint a gold post. When I was in high school, <laughs> the football team, we used to paint our own. You know? Why can't that happen today? Things like that, that's, that's my point. That's what, that's what we need to get a, a handle on. But somehow, with the schools, it's, oh, if we don't do this, poor Johnny's going to get a substandard education. You know, it's, We want the best for our children. Well, of course we do. And, and my way of providing the best for the children of Deerfield is for, to help provide a good future for them. And it's not just what they learn in the school. It's learning how the school operates and functions and how to be responsible. And those are, those are things that are, are going to carry them through their entire lives. And just because it's a school doesn't mean you get to spend $90,000 on a lawnmower. You know? And I don't know how to get control of that. You know, if I could, I would get more involved with that. But you know, just dealing with I, well, what it's I get very to deal important. with It's very important that it be sustainable. And my it is. whole speech every single year, and which I don't know what to do, is how do, how do we make it sustainable? Because it isn't sustainable the way it's going. And so do you have any suggestions for strategies, how we're going to handle for, this? For the budget, moving forward on the budgets, with this, well, working with the schools. We've, we've tried all kinds of combinations where we've had joint finance and select boards from the four towns. And you know we've had and joint. Even, the other towns are less able than Deerfield is, actually. I know. So, yeah. well, we have to figure out some way, because I understand where you're coming from, Kip. It's just from if we keep spending the way we're spending, you know, the school budgets outspend the town budget. Oh, I understand. That. And and so what it is 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 squeezing the town more and more, and we can't offer the services and keep cutting, and and keep supporting the schools. And we want to support the schools. So, how do we make this more sustainable? We had, we did have a committee that I, I was really fairly excited about, and then it really fizzled out. Committee um, to how to, how to be more sustainable. Come up with ways to be more sustainable. In um, and it was a four town committee, and it had we had we met through the winter, one whole winter, a couple of years ago, and it was really yeah, someplace away. It, it, there were, there and then it fizzled two or three out. Three different committees doing different things. Yeah, and, and Try, trying to figure out some <coughs> kind of strategy because what's happening is the school budgets grow. You know, here we we struggle and we come in around <coughs> two two and a half percent in our town budget, but then we we further squeeze by the schools, well, and that's and it's about two thirds of our budget but I, is but school I, related. So it, that two thirds is growing faster than and, and then we then our two percent. You know, um, in, in cap. The school, like all of our departments, you know, the, the large majority of their budgets is labor, and, and I get that. But there's also a lot of money that's not, and, and I just think that um, it's just foolish spending. I mean, I know people who raise millions of dollars of grass for a living and do quite well. They don't spend ninety thousand dollars on a lawnmower. And I just keep harping on that. That's just one of many things. You know, you can't just say it's for the school and this is what we need and it's done. Um, you know, it's I, well, I, I, somebody has so to say So what are we no. going to do? And I know, but so 
how do we well, how do we channel the, the frustration well, into a positive I think the first thing that you need to do thing. is you need to take a look at the school budget and really break it down. And there there is a breakdown that we have, but I think it needs to be refined a little bit. And then you need to track that for a while. Or, or maybe not, but at least you know, in looking at school budgets and, and, and I'm generalizing a little bit, and if I break the school budget down into three components, that's so called regular ed special ed, and then pretty much everything else, which is administrative costs. Right now, the typical budget is give or take about one-third for regular ed, one-third for special ed, and one-third for all other costs, whether it's heating, principals, uh, superintendents, non-teaching staff, in other words. We literally spend about as much on special needs youngsters as we do on uh, regular ed. And we, you know, and we're required to provide those services. And yet, if you look at what we get from the state, it's really little. It really hasn't changed, at least in the last ten years. And I, have, you know, I think if you go well, back, the percentage has dropped tremendously. And the necessarily, the percentage has dropped. They, they used to fund it between just a little over thirty-two percent when I was first elected, mm -hmm. and now it's it's just. I don't know, I mean, when, when, I, when I was first on the We've school committee, up, see, we picked up the rest. Which is when, really, when proposition, when, when, what it, the laws, 194 or something or other, which is the federal special ed law. Uh, it was going to be in the, in the four, the anticipated cost was going to be in the four to five percent of the budget range. That's it. And we had the legislature promising that it would cover that. 100% that 4 to 5% that special ed cost. They would cover 100%. Well, you know where that's gone. And now they don't even you know. maybe maybe we should have um, maybe we should have another meeting with our legislators and I, I think that would be good. I mean, they know that at least one of them. But yeah. I think that I, I think that uh, have, I'm not saying that's a bad idea. But we're not the only community in this commonwealth that's screaming for education money. Oh, no, no, but we, so it, it, we know that it's going to be a difficult road. I, I mean, the, the state has. But the point is the growth has been oh. in, in the budget. Yeah. The major growth in the school budget has been in the area of special ed. Going Which from, is mandated. Right. And it's mandated. Going from essentially pretty much zero dollars yeah. to the budget. Deerfield Elementary spends five million dollars. Million and a half is special needs. When I first got on the school committee back in 1977, you know, it, you, special ed costs were little enough. We're going to get back to talking about the compensation plan. Would you like me to? Well, anything uh, I can yeah. Clarify? The other the other thing they're going to say is someplace along the way, we need to do the, the budgets. And right now, you've got budgets, and the ones that you were missing in there primarily are the sal budgets that have salaries in. Sure. Yes. And I would recommend that you use this schedule. We can, we, you can always take money out later if that's the desire. Okay. Uh, this is just the schedule that includes COLA, nothing else. Okay. No. Whether or not to in include step increases. Is well, I think you need to put the steps in because you're not going to get, you, you're going to, you don't put the steps in and you might as well get your, boost your legal cost so that you can hire a labor lawyer. That's where we're going. Well. And I mean, that, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, that, and, I, and I'm pretty serious about that. I think it's probably an 80% chance. So you, you're suggesting that employees will sue us because we don't give them no, a raise? No, form a union. Form, form a union. union. Well, you know, there's plenty of contracts. We can do away with our whole highway department for one and hire private contractors. You could. We can buy private. There's private. You, you, I mean, you weren't the first person that suggested that. You know, I, I mean, I, in a community like this, I think that we can all get along, and that people. I don't. I've. I do not see any position in this town where people are grossly underpaid. It's a good place to work. I agree. It's you know you don't have to work weekends. Uh, you know the, the hours are good. The conditions are good. The people are good. I mean, it's it's a great place to work. In fact, if there's job opening, I'd apply. <laughs> Poor Wendy. It's just... <laughs> right? She's yeah, going by. The hours are great. Listen, we have to... Those Poor are self-inflicted. 
Yeah, correct. but Wendy's been working You're long hours. Right. We need to wind up here. You are right. Okay. Okay. I take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Thank I you, second sir. that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>